All right, it's on. What's going on, beautiful people? Uh, this video, not video, <laughs> this article caught my eye. I just read the headline. I didn't actually read the article at all, but it says male body odor can stink like urine or have a pleasant vanilla smell depending on one gene. So this is, I guess, in a reaction because I'm going to read it for the first time. I um, wanted to read more. Um, I wanted to read more articles that are related to body odor. And I think this one is interesting in particular because apparently there's a gene that affects your body odor if you're a male maybe there's one it, that affects you if you're a female as well who knows before i get started reading the article i do want to say this i'm going to keep saying this till the end of the year i have created an effective treatment survey that is supposed to well uh figure out well it's a survey that's supposed to determine what are the most effective treatments for people who either have holitosis patm or body odor or just uh, some TML or something like TML in general. Um, I'm going to drop a link in the descriptions or post it in the comments. The goal is to hit 100. Um, I think I have 40 something at this moment. So we're pretty close, man. And even if we pass 100, if we hit 100, then the goal will be 200. And if we pass 200, the goal will be 300, et cetera, et cetera. But let's get into the article. Um, this came out in 2007, so damn. This was technically 14 years ago, right? Am I correct on that? I believe 14, is that 14 years ago? No, I think it's 14 years ago, or maybe it's 17 years ago, technically. I think it's 17 years ago. Anyways, uh, uh, summary says, why the same sweaty man smells sweet like vanilla to one person and repellent like urine to another comes down to the smeller's genes. Up to one third of adult humans cannot perceive an odor in a component of male body odor that induces physiological responses in both men and women. To those who do, andro androstenone either takes on a pleasant sweet odor or a repulsive urine-like one. New research traces this variability to mutations in a single odorant receptor gene, a finding that raises questions of how people detect other people's body odor. Here's the full story. To many urine smells like urine, uh, to many urine smells like urine and vanilla smells like vanilla. But androstenone, a derivative of testosterone that is a potent ingredient in male body odor, can smell like either depending on your genes. While many people perceive a foul odor from androstenone, usually that of stale urine or strong sweat, others find the scent sweet and pleasant. Still others cannot smell it at all. New research from Rockefeller University, performed in collaboration with scientists at Duke University in North Carolina, reveals for the first time that this extreme ver variability in people's perception of androstenone is due in large part to genetic variations in a single order receptor called OR7D4. Androstenone, found in higher concentrations in the urine and sweat of men than of women, is used by some mammals to convey social and sexual information, and the ability to perceive androstenone scent may far-reaching behavioral implications for human. Uh, for humans, I guess. Humans. In the largest study ever conducted of its kind, researchers at Rockefeller University presented nearly 400 participants with 66 odors at two different concentrations and asked them to rate the pleasantness and intensity of each odor. When scientists at Duke University identified OR7D4 as a receptor that androstenone selectively activates, Leslie Vossel, Kimmer's family associate professor and head of the laboratory of neurogenetics and behavior at Rockefeller University and Andreas Keller, a postdoc in her lab, formed a collaboration with them and began collecting blood samples from participants and isolated their DNA. The Duke team led by Hiroki Masunami used DNA from each participant to sequence the gene that encodes OR7D4 receptor. With this large data set, we are able to say that people who express different variants of this receptor perceive this odor differently. 
says Voss Hall, although it has long been suspected that the ability to perceive odor of androsinone is genetically determined, this study is the first to identify the variations in a single gene that account for a large part of why people perceive androsinone so differently. With their do collaborate collaborators Voss Hall and Keller identified two point mutations called single nucleotide polymorphisms along the gene which gave rise to two variants of the odorant receptor RT and WM which differ by two amino acids as a group participants with the RT RT genotype perceive androstenone's odor as foul and intense those with the RTWM genotype, on the other hand, are more likely to perceive androsinone as less pleasant. Many cannot smell androsinone at all, although some participants with the RTWM genotype can smell androsinone. They experience the smell very differently than those who with two copies of fully functional receptor. To them, androsinone doesn't smell like urine; it has a vanilla scent. There are two independent things that are interesting about this odor, says first co-author Keller. One is that it is a potential social signal, but the other one is that so many people cannot smell it. Two additional point mutations in some of the participants influence their sensitivity to androsinone, one of, one of which may make humans hypersensitive to this odor. Vosshall and Keller are interested in what it is about these amino acid changes that alters one's perception of androsinone scent and in whether one's perception of this potent compound can influence behavior. Since some animals clearly use androsinone to communi communicate sexuality and dominance within a social hierarchy, it's intriguing to think whether the same thing may happen in humans. Vosshall says, if so, what happens to humans who can't get the signal because they have the non-functional copy of the gene or the hyperfunctional one? What could be the social and sexual implications of this on one's perception of the smell of fellow humans? The researchers reported September 16th as an advanced online publication of the journal Nature. Okay, so that's the end of the article. So, Two different mutations of the OR7D4. Uh, if you have the RTRT, the sweat of male androstenone smells like urine. But if it's RTWN, it has a sweet vanilla scent. That is interesting. And I guess it's sort of interesting to me because with this weird condition I have, whether I don't know what type, it is, I know it's not TMAL, but it's probably something similar to that. What if... I always thought to myself that there are just some people who can pick up have to, can pick up the smell. There's just they have the I don't know maybe they they have I always thought to myself they have a strong sense of smell. Maybe they're born with the ability to, to pick up odorants better than other people's noses. But then it's possibly maybe they're they're just genetically predisposed to perceive my odor or have a strong perceive my odor as bad and maybe if there's someone who has the ability to perceive my odor as bad maybe there's some people who think I have a, a flowery smell or something like that I don't know like that's a that's an interesting thing about human beings sometimes our genes can be mutated in a way where something that other people cannot detect they can detect strongly and they think that your smell so offensive. But on the other hand, uh, I guess on the opposite side, there could be some people who think you smell really good. And, you know, I've, I've actually read some comments uh, here and there over the Internet within these body forums of people who actually are married or in relationships and stuff. And I would read I remember reading this one comment where he was it was a man who said he was married and he had T-Mal. And apparently his wife actually was the one who initiated the conversation to, you know, to connect with him. He didn't make the move. She did because she found him so attractive and she never showed any type of reaction to him having T-Mal. However, when he was in the military or something, I think he was like in the military, um, there would be constantly be people that will remind him that he smells bad or offensive or whatever. So it's, it's just very... It's a very annoying. It's fascinating, but it's annoying. But, you know, I'll just drop this link. 
as well as dropping the effective uh, treatment survey uh, so you guys can look at both of them. Other than that, uh, you guys have a good day. Hopefully, damn, it's 10 minutes. Uh, whatever.